What's up, BK? You made it, man. I made it. I'm in. Nice job. Nice job. Uh, let's see. Everybody on today, we've got Patrick Hallmark with us, head coach, UT San Antonio, Conference USA member out there in Texas. Um, dude, appreciate you jumping on with us today, man. Oh, I'm happy to be here, man. Looking for things to do right now, unfortunately. Mowing the field? Can you mow it enough? Uh, yeah, Can you we even are get still on mowing it? it. The field looks great. Field never looked this good normally, so yeah, it's it, we're ready to play baseball. I bet. And you guys were, dude. You guys were playing a great year. You were, I think, ten and seven when this thing kind of shut down. Um, yeah. For those for those kids out there who don't know Patrick Hallmark, um, you've been around for quite a while. Um, a long coaching oh, BK, career. Yeah. I'm an old man, BK. You got it. We we all are, man. We all are. But dude, a long time. You, you were coaching down at Rice. Um, in Mizzou, and then you take over as your first head coaching job a couple years ago, Incarnate Word, D1, and built some incredible success there. Um, 37 wins, Conference Coach of the Year last year in 2019, and boom, here you are at UTSA, staying in San Antonio. How pumped is that for you? Yeah, we were excited. I was really lucky because my entire staff, Coach Shepard, Coach Aguayo, and Coach Luvanos all came came with me across town to, to UTSA. So all four of us were excited to get over here. And, uh, you know, this year we were off to a good start. Um, like everybody else, disappointed in, in the way it turned out just because we didn't get to play enough baseball. But but uh, UTSA is on the rise, and we're looking for great things to come. I'm with you on that. Say hi to Aguayo and Shep and all the dudes out there for me. Good guys you got with you. They're here, man. They can hear you. So They're hanging in the bird bath out there. Yeah, you got it. Tell Shep to fire up that barbecue. <laughs> he is. He's going fishing and barbecue. That's that's Shep. I mean, that's all you can do right now, really. Hunting, fishing, yeah. hiking. I don't know. I mean, what, what are you, what's your day-to-day -day life like right now? Well, we, we, we keep in touch with the guys. So we're talking to – between the four coaches, we talk to every player every day, um, just making sure they're, they're getting their grades. That's the biggest thing right now is the sure. academic semester is winding down Friday, actually. So we're still uh, – kind of talking to those guys every day, mostly about academics, which at the end of the day is not what we, we would prefer to be playing baseball, but that's super important. So it is knock out the grades, the finals here in the next week, and then they get a, they get a break from the academics and we'll see what summer ball does. I'm sure like most of the guys, um, the coaches you're talking to, we're, we're crossing our fingers, at least in Texas, that we'll get to do some of this summer ball. I saw something posted yesterday or the day before that, they've actually confirmed some kind of a summer league out in Bryan or like a tournament or something. And they are yeah. Yeah. early June, June 1st through 6th. They're going to play a tournament for college players. So yeah, we're excited about that. We'll have a guy or two. It's going to be a national deal. They're trying to get kids from the, across the country. Yeah. But, uh, we'll have a guy or two that plays in it. Um, so yeah, the state of Texas is, is trying to get things going. And, and again, uh, we hope it happens. Yeah, I think kids are so hungry to play. I mean, they're bored, they're hungry, they want to get out there and get seen. That'll be interesting how they choose the kids that are – I think they're going to pick 100, and I bet they'll get 1,000 yeah. kids who want to play. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they'll have plenty of applicants, yeah. They sure. Um, all right, so, like, <clears throat> some of the other stuff that you can, you know, do at home to stay ready for when you do get back. Like, your players, they may be playing in three weeks. Like, what are a couple of good things for them to be doing at home? I think the number one thing to me is long toss. I think that's super important because if they're throwing long toss two or three days a week, I think their arm will be in a good place to pick back up. Um, obviously, the pitchers probably need to be, be throwing a bullpen or two. But, but for the most part, that long toss is a wonderful way to just keep your arm acclimated to throwing. You know, even a catcher, shortstop, those guys that are throwing a lot, um, if they keep the long toss going – I, I think they'll be fine with their arm, you yeah. know, uh, batting practice as much as you can. That's a little harder to do, at least for, for where we're at, because a lot of the batting cages are not open. Um, so the hitter, you know, it's just like an early spring training. When, whenever things do open back up, the hitters might be a little behind. But in terms of, of being safe and uh, productive, I think the long toss will put these guys in a good position to, to be healthy um when they do get back to playing on top of that the strength and conditioning is always good yeah in the era we live in bk you know if you're gonna hit you got to be strong so guys should be taking advantage of uh you might not be able to get as many cuts in right now as you'd like or as normal you're certainly not seeing the live pitching you normally would 
but get in that weight room and crush it, get strong, and, and those exit velocities and just the impact on the ball will be much harder when you come back. I mean, what a great time for these kids to get strong and stay healthy and, you know, build that longevity in their body. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. And those two things will keep them healthy when they come back. That's the big thing is that first, whenever we do get back at it, those first two weeks, um, you know, the guys just got to be smart with how much they're, they're putting, on, putting on their bodies in terms of staying healthy. Yep. Agreed. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the style of baseball that makes – a good player for a Pat Hallmark system? Like, what are you looking for in a kid out there? Versatility. We love aggression and we love versatility. Um, and I guess what I mean by that is I'm probably talking mostly a position player right now. Um, you know, we like guys that can play more than one position. We like guys that are athletic. You know, at the high school level, that usually means they play somewhere in the middle of the field. So catcher, shortstop, second base, center field, um, we love those guys. We love aggression. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, a, a lot of these guys want to know what it takes to be recruited, whether it's by us or just in general at the Division One level. And your talent's your talent. So we all know it takes talent. That's probably first. And that's the easy answer. But, but beyond that, I'd say the two things that'll, that'll hold some weight when we're out watching you is play aggressive. Aggressive, even too aggressive. I know that might sound a little odd, but but it, it does not turn a college coach at all off if a guy's a little too aggressive on the bases or he gets up there ready to hit, hit the first pitch all four year at bats. Be ready to swing. Um, you know, so, so that's probably my biggest take is talent. You can't get away from talent. Um, but, but be aggressive and be versatile. If you play center field one game and I roll out there a week later and you're playing third base and you're competent at both spots, I like you a little more than a guy that's – playing one position for the seven or eight times I see them. So aggression and versatility are always good. That's really good tip for kids out there. I love that. And I mean, you, you know, you do, I think you're recognized as a really good recruiter of talent and being able to develop that talent when they come in. So, I mean, that is something that, you know, you guys can work on too. I mean, you're developing that talent. So talent can always be improved. Oh, absolutely. You know, there's some raw intangibles that, you know, the boxes that, that people try to check, whether it's speed or, or power in batting practice. And we all look at that some. You can't get away from that stuff. But uh, very few guys step on a college campus and are ready to compete against these older players. So the development side of things is truly why, why I got into coaching and why most people get into coaching. Um, we love to coach players. We love to work with players. We like baseball. At the end of the day, we like practicing and playing baseball which I guess what I'm trying to say, that's where play, that's what player development is made up of. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, and that's a cool statement too, because I, I think for kids watching out there, when they want to know what it takes to be a college baseball player, uh, I was there. It is, it's not easy, man. And you have got to love the game. And you, I think you got to love your coach and you got to love your teammates. Um, talk a little bit about that one, like one day in UTSA baseball. I mean, Give a kid a snapshot of that real quick. Yes, sir. Um, most, most of the day will start out in the mornings. You got some type of strength training, um, usually four days a week. So it's and early, days. right? Yeah, it's pretty early. We usually start about 7. Um, so there'll be some strength training about 7 a.m. Then the guys will grab something to eat and go to class. Um, they're in class for, for about half the day, usually end around lunch. Um, after lunch, a typical day, which is what you ask for, is, is guys will come out and do some type of early work, uh, whether it's ground balls or uh, batting practice. But most of our guys come out on their own. They'll text us and say, Coach, I get some ground balls or some swings. So there's usually some early work. They usually take a little, maybe an hour between the early work and when practice starts. Practice usually ramps up about 2.30 or 3 o'clock. And uh, like most places, we're going to use all the time they allot us, which is 20 hours a week. So you're looking anywhere from three to four hours of practice um, kind of depends on the position too. Some of the, uh, sometimes the pitchers aren't out there quite as long, Yeah. Uh, but we like to give them off in the evening uh, and tell them to get that studying done. And, and we want to make sure they eat real good and get those bodies uh, recovering. The recovery is super important. Um, and then they're back at it the next morning, some type of strength training again, but that's a typical day. It's a full day. There's no doubt about it. And you can't get around it at the end of the day. And, and this is the case with our players at UTSA. 
they want it. They want more. Um, they don't – very few guys are saying we're doing too much. So, uh, you, you got to love baseball, which most of these guys do. I think – I don't think uh, we're unique in that regard, whether it's out in California or on the East Coast. Most of these recruits and these players in these programs, they want to play. They want to yep. practice. And uh, it's fun to do it, and that's a typical day. Very cool. Um, so I've been out to the facility out there. You guys got any uh, – I like the bird bath. It's a cool spot, man. I mean, you got it's your own quaint. spot there. It's beautiful. <laughs> right. Uh, it's quaint. It's it Texas. Is. Cedar trees and oak trees. Ballpark surrounded by cedar and oak. And, um, you know, not a ton of seating, but but we, we try to fill up what we got. And the, surf, the playing service is fabulous, and it's right here on campus which we love. It's literally in the middle of campus. Uh, if yep. you're a right-handed hitter, you can pepper the, you can pepper the dormitories all day with some home runs. Um, Cause they're literally right beyond the left field fence. So it's quaint and, and small and, and it's uh, we like it though, man. It gives us a home field advantage. Yeah. It's a nice place. I, I really like San Antonio. So I encourage any kids out there to check you guys out on the website and um, check out UTSA. Wonderful city. Yeah. Uh, the it, guys it's a great the city. The city of San Antonio is a big draw for us recruiting wise. It's a great place to live, whether you're, whether you're old man like me and you or, or a, a 18 to 22 year old, tons of things to do in San Antonio. It's a, it's a happening place. And that's one of the reasons we do okay in recruiting is, is the city we're in. Yeah. It's beautiful out there. Uh, crystal clear, little creeks and rivers. Uh, yeah. Pretty awesome, man. If you like to fish, you can, you can get with coach Shepard and, and hit all kinds of spots within 30 minutes all over here. He'll teach you how to barbecue a, uh, a brisket out there. Smoke yeah. a brisket. You got it, man. Hey, Coach Hallmark, man, we appreciate you being on Team Easton. We appreciate you taking the time to come talk a little stay ready baseball action with the kids out there. BK, you got it. We're grateful to Easton, and uh, we love partnering with you guys. All the best, man. Thank you, my man. Stay safe, stay hungry.